thought that in his quest for truth, he had gone off, lost his mind completely. Because I would say, well, the church does this, the church does this, you know, the Catholic church does this. Because we were taught that the Catholic church was the great whore. He said, get the full perspective. We were taught that it's a cult. We were taught that the Pope was the Antichrist. You know, we were, he taught these things, as a matter of fact. I really had conflict with it until I sat down and I challenged God. I said, you know what, well, Lord, if this is your doing, then open my eyes to it. Since 1982, the Maranatha Christian Church met in this Greek Orthodox building on Detroit's west side. Maranatha's doctrinal roots were a form of American Pentecostalism, the same as those of their founder and pastor, Reverend Alex Jones. But in the years preceding 1998, the doctrine and practices Jones inculcated in his flock were closer to charismatic evangelicalism Along the continuum of Christian faiths, with Roman Catholicism at one end, Maranatha was about as far away from Rome as one could get. Like many of his evangelical contemporaries, Jones taught that Roman Catholicism was a cult, the Whore of Babylon, and that the Pope was the Antichrist. In January of 98, Reverend Jones innocently asked his Wednesday night Bible study if for a change of pace, they would like to experience an early church worship service. Well, I was trying to be creative. Uh, we were studying 1 Timothy chapter 2. Paul deals with corporate worship. Um, I thought it'd be novel and maybe take our church back to have a, have a first century apostolic worship service. I think one of the things that would trouble me or make me at least uh, be very cautious is what I call repristination, and that's a kind of the, the idea that somehow we can recreate uh, what happened in the early church. Uh, for one thing, I don't think we can do that. Um, the, there is not enough uh, material to be able to do that. Um, and, and the culture is different. So I said, give me 30 days, let me do some research, and I'll get back with you, and on one Wednesday night we'll have an apostolic worship service. They said, great. And so for 30 days, I began to read. And what I found out has changed my life forever. Rather than reading what contemporary authors had said about the early church, Jones decided to go to the primary sources. On the internet, he found the writings of the early church fathers, who described in detail how they worshiped and what they believed. The Wednesday night experiment was a success, but Jones's reading had only just begun. Not many weeks later, Jones began to introduce Sunday morning worship practices and doctrines that could only be described as Catholic. Many in his congregation became concerned and some left. Although he claims his initial intention was only to reintroduce practices and beliefs held by the early church, more than a few in his congregation made the explicit connection to Roman Catholicism, that whore of Babylon. The more he denied his Catholic intentions, the more demonstrative some members fought the changes. And the more Jones read, the more he says he was confronted by claims he could not refute that Catholicism held within it the fullness of Christianity. Eventually, he would agree with his detractors. He was headed for Rome. To be honest with you, when I first heard it, I, I said, uh, no, that can't be. What are you talking about? And they said, no, he, he's, he's, he's going into the Catholic Church. Uh, I was in his office, myself and our producer, and him, the three of us. And I said, uh, I said, Alex, I, first of all, you, you need to understand, I'm just going to be frank with you. Uh, when I first heard this, the next words out of my mouth is, is he crazy? So I said, so I'm asking you, are you crazy? And of course, uh, that began our discussion. We chuckled together. And uh, then I realized how serious he was. After 40 years of highly respected ministry to Detroit's black community, Alex Jones was on the hot seat. All of his deacons and two-thirds of his congregation left. Uh, where is the 
At home, his wife Donna challenged his newfound doctrine at every turn. See, because there is nothing in the Bible. First chapter. Mary's life. Go back to verse number. Wait, 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 wait. let me do it. <laughs> in public, his peers assailed him. Uh, I believe the Catholic Church, uh, in their baptismal ceremonial, they sprinkled. Now, the very word baptismal means to be emerged, mm -hmm. and, and that's in complete opposition of what Jesus commanded to be done. In fact, so, uh, that so, raises a question. Are you going to change your mode of baptism now? There were frank discussions and hard questions on both sides. After six months of instruction by Jones in all things Catholic, the adult remnant of Maranatha voted 39 to 19 to take the next steps necessary to seek full communion with the Catholic Church. But the steps were obscure. The Archdiocese of Detroit had never before been petitioned by a church body to become Catholic, and fears of ecumenical unrest and racial tensions created frustration and disillusionment among Jones and his followers and within the church hierarchy. The Archdiocese ordered those involved to avoid all media coverage. Then, on Sunday, September 10th, the Reverend Alex Jones knocked on the doors of Detroit's St. Suzanne Catholic Church and led over 60 members of his former Pentecostal congregation inside. Their reception at first was warm, but soon some members of St. Suzanne would leave because the African Americans were no longer a distinct minority. During the Mass, he and his wife Donna retired his vestments and communion chalice into the care of their new pastor, Father Dennis Duggan. The future for Alex Jones and his Maranatha followers is unclear. Their confirmation as Catholics will come only after seven months of intensive training, culminating in a three-hour mass the night before Easter. Until then, they're excluded from the sacraments. How many of the 65 persevere until Easter is unknown. Meanwhile, Alex, the entrepreneurial minister and preacher, must be content to sit on the sidelines and watch others do the work he loves best. But he will stay busy. Jones may be forced to defend a lawsuit brought by disgruntled former Maranatha members who want a cut of the $700,000 the church gained with the sale of their building. Then he must find work. What will he do? In recent months, Alex Jones has had a dream. He's discovered that in a few instances, the Pope has made exceptions. Alex hopes he can persuade the pontiff to make one more. For the former Reverend Jones Pentecostal is attending Catholic seminary and hopes, although he's married with children, to be ordained a priest and someday be called Father Jones, Catholic.